So our first inductee was a Mongoose team member, as, as was I. And he's one of the guys I followed from the minute I left the sport. And I saw Tim Fuzzy Hall, and I'm like, this is a guy that I can follow. A Mongoose guy, such a great attitude. And I'm very excited to share a video with you of his accomplishments. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, watch the lights. Often in life, success is all about being in the right place at the right time and having the right stuff. Utah's Tim Fuzzy Hall can attest to that as he was invited to stick around after the races for an impromptu photo shoot with Wendy Osborne in 1987. After pulling off an array of limbless jumping variations, one which made it onto the cover of BMX Action Magazine, his life was never the same. Nearly overnight, Fuzzy became a dirt jumping superstar. He joined the test riding crew at BMXA, then became the first factory-sponsored dirt jumper with Robinson Racing before landing a spot with longtime sponsor, Mongoose. On the thriving dirt jumping scene, fan favorite Fuzzy would win the very first ever King of Dirt title and took the sport to the next level, pulling the first ever 720 at the X Games. Did we mention yet that he also went pretty fast on a race bike? Working his way through the pro ranks, Fuzz podiumed plenty of times in single A pro, and for a brief time, even took on the big boys of double A. After a fun night of shredding Billy Griggs tiny backyard pump track, he heard the life-changing words from Billy's dad, Buck. He told Fuzz, all it takes is a shovel. From that moment, Fuzzy would give the term backyard track a whole new meaning. Buying and building a home with a specific plan for a backyard track, his backyard became one of the first dirt meccas in BMX. It would inspire all of his competition to do the same. Later on, he used those same skid steer skills to become the official jump builder for the Dude Tour, Gravity Games, and Vans Triple Crown. Having worked in the industry for brands such as Skullcandy, OGL, Redline, and Red Bull, and co-owning Utah's 50-50 bike shop, Fuzzy has more than left his mark on the BMX scene. Who would have ever guessed that no-footed can-cans and knack back in 1987 would lead to nearly a lifetime of pushing the BMX envelope? Today, he continues to inspire and mentor many of today's top action sports stars. So please, stand up and raise a glass to one of the first megastars of dirt jumping, Tim Fuzzy Hall. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> Billy Griggs. Billy Griggs. And to Buck. It only takes a shovel, right? Man, um, I think I'd rather a 720 truck driver big 32 fit set of doubles right now than be up here. I'm so nervous. Um, well, I guess what I'm going to do tonight is, uh, well, first of all, I just want to thank you all for coming out, you know, to the BMX Hall of Fame. Um, it's truly an honor. Um, it's, uh, y you know, when um, I got the call from Shannon Gillette and just, uh, um, and I made it. I'm inducted. It's like, man, am I old? And uh, what? I didn't, I really thought about it. And, uh, and then I thought about it and um, I went back to the wife, Terry, and, and, she goes, are you kidding me? That's a lifetime accomplishment. And um, Cash, thank you for saying that and explaining that earlier, how it is. It's uh, truly a re rewarding to be up here right now and everything, all those wrecks and getting back, back up and finding an, a new motivation or whatever it took to get back on the bike was always, it was always tough, you know, and um, travel was always crazy. And, um, but, and I've had a blast and let me get into this. So I just, um, for, for those of you that don't know me, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, lots of friends here, you know, and um, it's not your, you know, I grew up in this very small town, and um, I owe a lot of people there, and they're all here tonight. They helped me get down to Southern California to make a lot of those dreams. I, I don't know what they were. They weren't dreams. They were just, it just felt right at the time to be down there and, and uh, be involved in the sport, whether it was racing or 
you know, going to Eric Carter's house or Billy Griggs' house in this backyard and just having such a great time on my bicycle and, and just leaving there, just always learning a new trick or always learning something new and shooting photos with Wendy Osborne or Spike Jones or the list could go on and on. Um, you know, but I'm going to hurry and base my speech tonight on an acronym um, and I'm going to call it RIDE. And um, I guess the, you know, I'm going to start with the letter R and um, I'm going to use uh, rental car. <laughs> um, it, it's the very first thing that came to my mind. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we could be here all night with all of the stories between all of us. And uh, for the people that don't know about rental cars, and uh, I learned real quick from Travis Chaprez to uh, always take out the insurance. And, uh, <laughs> and the rumors have multiplied over the years about rental cars, you know, and, uh, and there's some great stories. And it'd make a great coffee book one day. Um, but anyway, really, the, the real letter and, and uh, word here is uh, respect. Um, and I have so much respect for all of you and the people that have already been inducted and what you've done for my life. Um, you know, whether it was just a photo on my wall as a kid and uh, that inspired me to keep going and, um, and get down to Southern California and, and, and ride with all of you that I looked up to. And a lot of you are here tonight. And for those of you that aren't here, um, I appreciate for what you, you've done for the sport. Um, and with that respect was I've, I've learned to never burn a bridge. Um, and I, I feel like I can truly, truly honestly say that. Uh, hopefully, I haven't heard anything yet, have I? <laughs> okay, so, um, and uh, back to the ride, you know, um, I think what turned me on with BMX about it was how individual it was. I always thought I'd be like a, a soccer player, kind of like Ryan Nyquist. He always thought I'd be a soccer player, right? One of the best bike riders of all time. I'm sure he'll be here one day. Um, but um, in the independence that, um, that BMX had for me, it was, it was truly liberating to get on a bike, no matter what kind of bike it was, you know, but obviously I liked uh, my BMX bike a lot better. And, um, you know, so much that I would ride 26 miles uh, from Brigham City, Utah, all the way to Ogden to see my friends and, uh, and have a good time over the weekend on my bike. And um, it was truly liberating and the independence of riding a bike was a lot for me. And uh, uh, the letter D is uh, doors open and close. And um, so many doors have opened up for me and I've met so many great people through this sport or just uh, as the sport continues to grow and just becomes more creative and it attracts more people from different walks of life. And just uh, there's so many people that have a great BMX story. And I don't care how old you are, or whatever, they, they, they all have a good BMX story. And it usually relates to a brand with us. Kuahara, Haro, Redline, Mongoose, it's, I could listen all day, I really could. And there's a lot of those stories out there, we all have them. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, what would the letter D be uh, without dirt? And uh, let's get into dirt. <laughs> let's get dirty here. I don't know anyone that's had like, <laughs> let's get dirty. You know, um, I could talk about dirt all day long. And uh, how, how often do you get to, um, uh, to me, dirt is an art, and how often do you get to shape it and and um, design it, and and then at the end of the day, ride your art, and it's truly a feeling that you get not only to look back at the end of the day and look what you created with your own shovel, or you know nowadays it might be tractors or skid steers, and then manicured with shovels, but still, it's an amazing task. I was just at T.J. Lavin's house um, two days ago, and just in awe. And T.J., I know you're out there. I'm very proud of you for not tearing down your backyard which I had to do this year. <laughs> so, and, uh, and I can't wait to ride with you uh, soon. Um, and um, another thing with dirt, you know, I've had it sh FedEx to my house overnight to do dirt samples because you can waste a lot of money when the dirt's not perfect. And a lot of, a lot of riders will complain when the dirt's not right. And, uh, and it, it was fun, not only as a bike rider, but to create that art that these riders would compete on, you know, and uh, to this day, you know, and, and um, it, it's just amazing to be a part of that in that part of history, you know, and it was it was backbreaking work. And I, I look back at it and um, I'm very proud of that, you know, almost as much as my bike riding and um, into the letter E um, experiences. Um, I think as a rider or any athlete or I don't care what you do, you have that moment of clarity and and um, 
thinking back through the years, I thought of um, Alan Foster, who is Brian Foster's. Well, there he is, Alan Foster. Like, one, <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Alan. Um, one of, it was in New Zealand, and uh, Alan and I did a trip over there. It was like a two-week trip, and I couldn't have had a better partner. And uh, it was truly from the heart over there. These kids have never seen American pros, and Brian and I were wrapped up in a bus, people's houses. This is before. I mean, it was. It was crazy, it, it, you know, and they were so welcoming and and Al and I would ride every day and they had skate parks over there that were just unbelievable. We just could not believe it and um, had a blast, you know, bunny hopping over kids at schools, just the just the basic stuff. And it was just that little stuff that these these young riders over there, um, they the dad pulls me aside and he goes, I just want you to know, like, you know, my son, he, he's looked up to you, obviously, and everything. And you just made their day. Do you want to barbecue with us? And uh, I was like, and, and me and Alan were obviously hungry, and, uh, and yes, please, you know, and we were so sick of just traveling, and it was so nice to have this huge barbecue dedicated to us, and we had a BMX track right next, this is in New Zealand, by the way, and I just started my traveling a lot, and uh, I just remember the sun's going down, and Alan riding, and all these young kids around us, and it was so pure, so genuine, and there was no money involved, and it was just like one of those peaceful, serenity, like, serene times in my life and I love it and I'm I was glad to witness that with you Alan and I've got plenty of those but and yes and so um and I and I guess uh well I gotta have another E right and so um I'm gonna go to e-break so to end this <laughs> okay and so and I'm just gonna end this with the best e-break e-break on any rental car is the Nissan Altima by far <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming and it's Truly heartfelt. Like, I really appreciate it. Thank you all. It's <laughs> like, okay.